another issue that is constantly brought up by those of the Hebrew Israelite worldview, the 12 gates. Ladies and gentlemen, they normally come from here from Revelation 21, and they discuss here at the New Jerusalem. Then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues and spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east gate three gates, the north gate three gates, uh, the south gate three gates, and the west gate three gates, and the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And the one who spoke with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city and its gates and walls. So let's look here. Keep reading. Those are the measurements. We're checking stuff. Does anybody see anything here? Let's go to the other side. I'm going to tell you the reason why I'm asking this here. Let's go over here. Uh, let's see the some foundations of the wall. Topaz and the street of the city was pure gold. And I saw no temple in the city. So the Lord God Almighty by His light. And the gates will never be shut by day. And the night day will bring it to it the glory and honor of the nations. Hmm. For but nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Do you see anywhere where it says that only Israel will enter through the gates? In fact, let's 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 go back here and check again. We got the measurements of the gates, but nowhere in the entire scriptures do we see that it says only Israelites will enter the gates. Let me change that. Only black Hebrew Israelites will enter the gates. I don't see that anywhere. Let's check one other. Oh, let's go with Big Boy here. All right, let's find out real quick. Let's go all the way to Revelations to see. Revelations 21. All right, we're looking here, uh, and this is this book is King James. I don't see anything here about black Hebrew Israelites. I don't see anything here. It's the Greek. Nothing. Please show us where it says only Israelites will be able to enter the gate because it has the gate Israelites. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem. Recha ha kodash, kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors and salute to you, other elders and brethren. Shalom to you, other followers and believers in supporting this ministry. That includes you, sisters, and shalom to the elect. So, anyway, I see this. I saw this video of this pastor who have, I mean. It's easy work, but it's almost, you know, it's almost hard to know where to begin. So we're just going to start off by reading the scripture that he pulled. And then we'll go from there and then see if this makes any kind of sense according to scripture literacy, I guess, if you want to say that. Um, this is Revelation 21. And we're going to try to just get to the point. Revelation 21 and 24. And it says, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor unto it. Okay. So this man is saying, where does it say black uh, Hebrew Israelites? Well, obviously it's a shame that we got to be even acknowledged as so-called black because not black because of the whitewashing. But see, nobody has a problem with white Hebrew Israelites. Nobody has a problem with white uh, Jesus. You know, nobody has a problem even in calling them that. It was normal for them to be considered white because the images that you saw look white, so-called white. So it was acceptable. But now that the truth has come out, 
you got guys like this who wants to try to stain the truth and how the images does matter, right? It does matter because you put up a sick person to play the role of the Messiah, right? You go to court, they want your license, they want you under oath, they want you to look like you look, they don't want you with any aliases, they want everything straight. But for whatever reason, when it come to come to our Savior and us following the Lord, we have to accept them looking white. We have to accept them with the Greek name. We have to accept them uh, who slept with his own sister, and, and uh, the uh, his father slept with his sister as well, which is his daughter. We have to accept these things. But you know, for the sake of the video, we try to expose these Christians in their sickness. And not understanding what the scriptures are saying. So, with just a few precepts, we're going to go into that. And we're going to look up this word, nations. Right? We're going to look up this word, nations. It says, a multitude, a mental beast associated living together, a company of troops sworn, a multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus. Genealogy. Right? Genealogy. Same nature or genus. The human family, tribe, nation, people, group. This tells you it's 1A, B, 2, 1A, 2A, 3, 4, 5, right? It has so many different definitions of, of uh, nation. So you have to apply it to the proper context, right? So the individuals are the same nature or gene, uh, genealogy. So we can clearly see here, this is if it was of the same nature or genealogy, this is not talking about a whole multitude of people, anybody, right? This is talking about someone of the same nature or genealogy. You know, and let me also add that we're not saying that we're going to be the only ones in the kingdom of heaven. There will be other nations coming, and we're going to get into those scriptures because uh, there's a thing called Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. The Lord requires that, with that which is past. So we're going to go to Acts 3.25 real quick which is a precept they like to pull out in the book of Genesis. When it, I think Genesis 12 and 3, in that uh, seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So we're going to go here, Acts 3.25. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant, which God made with our fathers, Yahweh, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Right? So we see that there. So we go on down here to kindreds which can be another name for nations. But for the sake of the video, this is why I went to this scripture and we're going to go to kindreds. This is why it's beautiful to be in the truth because we're more than light years ahead of these Christians, man. All they know is the Holy Bible and Jesus Christ. Now, where was all this energy in defending the gospel when we was following white Jesus? See, you're behind and now all of a sudden the truth has come out about what he looks like, who he's come for, and the nature of the Messiah, now all these scholars popping up thinking they know a damn thing, man. Anyway, G3965, let's see what it says. Lineage running back to so progenitor ancestry. This is what we saw in nations. Could be another uh, definition. We saw in nat uh, nations, a multitude associated living together of the same nature or gene. Right? So we're going to go back to nations again. I mean, kindreds it says a group of families now it says families with the s all those who given people lay claim to a common origin well you go back to nations this is what we see in one of the definition of nature nations a multi multitude of individuals of the same nature and genus okay so let's go back um a genealogy so let's go back it says the israelites was uh, distributed into 12 tribes descended from the 12 sons of Jacob. These were divided into families with an S. So you can't look at the nation of Israel and just say they were one nation or one family. They were families, right? Which were divided into houses in a wider sense, a nation of people. So we see different definitions here. But you see clearly one, two, a, B, B, right? All goes back and says the Israelites who was distributed 
into 12, uh, 12 tribes descending from the 12 sons of Jacob. They were divided into families with an S. But then when you go to Acts 3 and 1, it says, Hear ye, um, the, basically the word of the Lord, O children of Israel. You only have I known from all the families of the earth. Now that word families would be different because it's talking about other families of the earth. This is why you can't see nation and apply it and just say it's talking about all people. You can't see families and say, okay, it's talking about all nations, right? So clearly here, it says the 12 sons of Jacob, which were divided into families, right? Which were divided into houses. Let's go to Matthew 19, 28. And Yahweh shall said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. What happened to everybody? And if that's the case, and all salvation opened up, and Paul went through all these people, why wouldn't be other nations sitting up there like in the U.N.? right judging all their nations right why wouldn't it be other nations why wouldn't it be the tribe of edom in one of the 12 gates right why wouldn't it be them why wouldn't it be moab and ammon right and ishmael why aren't they sitting at the 12 gates judging anyway it gets worse let's go to isaiah 14 and of course their uh literature or let me say they're scholars that they find in their commentaries, they're not prophets, so they can't tell you a damn thing. The scripture says the Lord revealeth his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Now, this is called the restoration of Israel. So if a Christian reads this, they will say, oh, this everything is 70 AD and before, before that, according to Christians. It said the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. So when did the Lord set the Israelites in their own land? I'll wait for that too. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Again, Luke, I'm in Leviticus 19.34 and you go to the book of Acts, the 13th chapter. It also goes and talk about who the strangers are. You got strangers who can be heathens and you got strangers as Israelites. Just like during the time of the Pentecost, Acts the second chapter, you had certain Israelites who would come from all over and they could be considered strangers. This is why he said, love your enemies, love your neighbors. Mark 12 and 29 tells you that. Yahweh Shah said that. The first commandment and the second commandment, hear, O Israel, thou shalt love thy neighbor as they love thyself. Same thing as stranger. Nation, nation, stranger, stranger, and this is why they threw that word Gentile in there. It's a Latin word. It's he, nor Hebrew nor Greek. Just so it can mean multiple things. This is why you must go into context. Isaiah 14 and 1. Um, it says, And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Israelites, right? And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord, for servants and handmaids and they shall take them captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors now according to doctrine and timelines when has the true Israelites been able to rule and take the whole nation's captives if the Lord set them in their, in their land the Lord never set the Israelites back in their land yet right let's go to jeremiah 30 let's go to jeremiah 30 and if any people when you look at the history right when you look at the history there's no one else fit these curses like we do period you got these toms they want to keep the system the way it is man they don't care but we're going to get some more scriptures it's going to get worse jeremiah 30 and 16 for them therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. So now when we go back to Isaiah 14 and 1, and it says, um, all the nations shall serve thee, right? Why, why are you having issues now? And if this is them, why is there issues with the U.S. and Russia and other states and other 
countries of the kingdoms, let me say that, Salakia, right, coming against one another. Wait a minute. I thought all Israel was heading and, you know, at the end of the day, the other nations must flow unto them. Oh, that's in Isaiah 14, 49 as well. Thy kings, thy nursing mothers and fathers, they shall bow down to them and lick up the dust of thy feet. But you see, people are trying to make it prophecy by bringing certain people across the water. It doesn't work, right? It's not working. It says, all them that was a spoil shall be a spoil, and all that was a prey will I give for a prey. Whether you like it or not, this is how it's going to go down, man. Daniel 7, 18, we're going to show you how it's going to go down. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and even forever and ever. Wait a minute. I thought all nations was going to be able to come up into the kingdom and you scholars can't get around that scripture. I thought all the nations was going to be able to flow in, get salvation, right? And, uh, but this scripture, that would mean in this, this vision or this prophecy would be a complete lie. The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom and some translations say they will receive the kingdom and will possess the kingdom forever, yea, forever and ever. So if there's a nation of people who's going to possess the kingdom, take the kingdom and possess it forever and ever, how the hell does everybody else have salvation in that? I'll wait on you Christians to believe that too. I mean, I'll wait on you Christians to answer that. You probably won't. You'll probably sit up there and say the same thing, oh, cute, and put a smiley face. That's how effeminate you Christians are, man. You're not set as men of the Lord. Psalms 14 and 7. On the salvation of Israel, on that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion, right? When the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people. Yep. Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. Here we go again. Here we go again. Again, they don't know the Bible. They jump up and all of a sudden want to be scholars this is why they hide behind little TikTok videos and make these little BS comments because they can't come up to us and handle it. Every Christian has come up. They've always got, you know, slaughtered with the scriptures, as the mother group say. You know, he got slaughtered with the scriptures. <laughs> they can't handle it, man. Isaiah 11, verse 11. As I'm going on, I'm just thinking of scriptures, right? It says, and it shall come to pass in that day the Lord shall set his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros. You're going to have our people looking like these different nations, by the way. That's what us at Great Millstone teach, by the way. So it's not just about black. And from Cush and from Elam, which these are all kind of dark nations, so-called black nations. And from Shinar and from him off, and from the islands of the sea. When did that happen? And let's see what else it says. And he shall set up an assign for the nations. This is what it says. This is what it says. I, I just stumbled on this. And he shall set up an assign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Here we go, see this word nations again. You see how it can mean different things. He, will, he shall set up an assign for the nations, and assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together to disperse of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Get around that. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Okay. So now we're going to just sum this all up with this one last verse that none of these Christians can handle. And when I say this verse, when we read this verse, you know what they say? They'll say it's because you can be a spiritual Israelite. But for whatever reason, the same pastor, the same shuck and job John Tom pastors will say those people in that land are the biblical Israelites. When it comes to us, it can be all spiritual if you want. But when it comes to them, they're the physical Israelites. Right. Hebrews 8 and 8. It says, because finding fault with them, he said, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day that I took them to lead them out of the hand, land of Egypt because they did, 
uh, continue not in my covenant, and I uh, disregarded them, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant, the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, right? The house of Israel and the house of Judah after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and, they, uh, uh, and write them in their hearts. Wait a minute. I mean, this is getting more confusion from Christian doctrine. If everybody can be saved, why is he singling out the Israelites to put their laws into their minds? Again, we're not saying other nations aren't coming to the kingdom, but for servants and handmaids, right? Anyway, this is what it says. I will write my laws into their minds, right? And write them in their hearts. And I will be their God. Wait a minute. I thought he can be everybody's God. <laughs> Which he's technically the God of everybody. But he's singling them out, going back to the book of Leviticus 20, 26, going back to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. The special people going back to Amos three and one, right? It says, "And they shall be my people, and none of them shall teach his neighbor, or uh, and none of his brothers, saying, Know the Lord.' So this clues, this proves this hasn't happened yet. This proves we're not in the New Testament, right? I mean, we're not in the New Covenant. That's what this proves. For all shall know me from the least." of them, of them. He's saying the least of them. Who's of them? The Israelites to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins. What happened to everybody? And their lawlessness, their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. When they're reborn back in the kingdom, the Lord's going to set up all the Israelites. Hate it, not like it if you don't like it, whatever. A lot of Christians closed the Bible and done away with it. Because they can't accept it. They've become atheists because they can't believe a God is like that. But face it, buddy. It's what it is. Luke 1 and 68. Zechariah's prophecy. Right? And I will raise up a horn of salvation from us, uh, from, for us in the house of his servant David. Right? Let me see. Blessed be the God, Lord God of Israel for he has visited and redeemed his people. And raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the, by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began. See, it's too many precepts that we should be saved from our enemies. So wait a minute. How are we going to be saved from our enemies if our enemies is coming to serve with us? It's not making sense. And from the hand of all that hate us. This is why Yahawashah said, um, take the persecution because there's something greater than what we're receiving now, right? What well, we're receiving the truth, there's nothing greater than this. This is why he said the, the kingdom of heaven starts within you. This is why we're setting an example. And this is why even myself, I got to examine myself and remember to be faithful and understand that things that are done is for the necessary reasons for me to get salvation. In Lord's will, I'll be saved. And, and, and the elect will be saved. That's pretty much it. Their brothers, families, sisters will be saved, man. That's what we're looking for. And we know damn well that these, these uh, um, uh, not everybody is going to be saved, period. No, only the children of Israel. That's all I have on that.